Hello, everyone. Thank, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Sergio. I'm from Brazil. This is my first talk at the uh, Linux conference, so I hope you enjoy the talk. We're going to talk here about the Linux kernel debugging. Uh, the title is Going Beyond Print K Messages. So one thing that we are not going to talk about here is putting print messages in the kernel to debug it, right? Well, let's try. OK. Um, well, I'm, I'm, as I said, I'm from Brazil. I've been working with Embella Linux for about 15 years. And today I have a company called Embella Labworks. We do a lot of training in Brazil. So it's around 40 trainings per year. So I'm used to talk a lot. Let's see if I can talk for only 30 minutes here. And I also have a blog in Brazil. I write a lot about Embella Linux. And I'm also a Linux kernel contributor. I contribute a, a little bit with Buildivoot and other open source projects. So this talk is not about Prince K, right? And everything related to, to Prince K. We're not also talk about static analysis too, like how to find bugs in the kernel, uh, looking at the source code. We're not talking also about fuzzing tools, like testing tools to find bugs in the kernel. We're not going to talk about user space debugging. It's only kernel debugging. And this is also not a tutorial because it's just 30 minutes. So we can't have a tutorial on a lot of tools that we're going to, to study here with just 30 minutes. Um, I know that there is some talks about debugging the Linux kernel in the past. So I'm trying here a little bit different talks. So I will try some live demos. I know it's risky, yeah, but I'll try it anyway. I have here a board connected to my machine, and uh, it's a board from Toradex. So if I have any problem here, I will call the guys from Toradex to help me. It is booting the Linux kernel through TFTP to network, and then mounting a root file system built with the root. So it's a very small system with the tools necessary for, for my, my talk, right? So. Uh, I have a lot of things to, to talk about, a lot of tools to, to show you guys. Who here is a kernel developer? Develop for the kernel. Great. We're going to talk about a lot of, a lot of tools to, to debug the kernel, and I, ho I hope you enjoy it. So before I, I start talking about the tools, I just want to talk a little bit about the process of debugging. When you have to debug something, you have to understand the problem, you have to reproduce the problem. If you don't understand the problem, uh, you're not going to be able to, to, to solve the issue faster, right? Uh, you have to, to be able to reproduce the problem because if you don't reproduce the problem, you don't know how, how um, when you solve it, right? You have to know how to reproduce it. You have to identify the source of the problem, and then you have to fix it. So I would say this is the main four steps to, to debug anything, right, in, in software. So our talk here uh, is focused on the, the, the tree, right? The, 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 the third step, the identify the source of the problem. There are different kind of, pro kind of problems that we, we can have in the kernel. We can have crashes, so the kernel just crash. You have the kernel oops, the kernel panic, and some tools to, to debug it and find the source of the problem. And uh, there is some problems that, uh, like a deadlock, so you have a lockup in the kernel, something hangs and stops working. And you have other tools to try to identify and fix that kind of problem. You could have um, a logic problem like uh, everything is working, but the, the result not, is not what is expecting. You can have a kind of leak, uh, like memory leak, so and, and some research leaks. Could be memory, could be a file descriptor, a socket. Uh, you could have performance problems, right? Like uh, this, the usage of the CPU is too much higher, things like that. So it's, here we have five different kind of problems. And uh, we, we could use different tools to debug and identify the source of those problems. The first tool I would mention is Sour Brain. Right, the knowledge, because if you don't have the knowledge to debug problems, um, you won't succeed, right? So if you don't know how the kernel works, what is virtual memory, how would you debug a problem with uh, invalid memory access? So you have to know how the system works. 
The, the se second kind of tool or, or, or technique you could use, we call the post-mortem analysis, right? So the problem already happened. We have the logs or a core dump and have to, to take a look at and find the source of the problem. Another tool or technique we could use is tracing, right? So trace the system. Uh, identify what functions are being called, how the functions are being called, how much time is taken to try to identify the source of the problem. Another kind of tool is interactive debugging. So you start GDB and debug the system interactively. You run the, 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 the code step by step, things like that, put breakpoints, etc. And we, we, you could have also some, I call debugging frameworks, like tools to, to find problems with memory leaks and lock and look up, things like that. So uh, we could have these five different uh, tools and techniques to try to debug these five kinds of bugs. And I created here a kind of table to try to identify what is the best tool for the job, right? So you could put print to solve all the things, right? No. Yeah, uh, our objective here is to talk about those two. So, uh, knowledge, knowledge could help in all problems. So, uh, if you don't have the knowledge, if you don't know how the system works, it would be very difficult to, to, to work and solve the problems. Post-mortem analysis, like having logs and dumps, would help in some kind of problems, like crashes. The, the best way to, to find bugs and that crashes the system is to, look at, is to look at the logs, take a look at the kernel, oops, kernel panic, or a dump, in, in our case, of the kernel to try to, to find the source of the problem. Logs and dumps could also help sometimes with lookups, the task hangs in kernel space, you could have a look at it, or logic problems. You have the logs, you can take a look at the, the system or the application or the kernel execution, try to find the bug. But uh, research leaks and performance, normally logs don't help with that. Tracing profiling could also help with a lot of different problems like lookups. You could trace the system, find the functions that are running. So if it stops in one function, you know it's hang it hanged there, so you can take a look at the, the problem easily. We're, we're going to try to use here trace to find a lockup in the kernel. Uh, performance could also be used with trace and, and profiling tools, so the tracing profiling tools like Perf, Ftrace, could help you to find problems of latency in the kernel space. Uh, interactive debugging can help in some kind of problems like uh, crashes. Sometimes we're going to use GDB here in the kernel to try to find problems with crashes also. Uh, lookups, logic, right? Your program, in our case, the kernel doesn't do what, what we want, so we could start a GDB session to take a look why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. But leakage problems, probably not. And performance, of course not, because the GDB makes the kernel run slower, so it's worse. And the buggy frameworks, like uh, you create a kind of tool to find the problems for example, memory leak, your kernel have, uh, the kernel, Linux kernel has a, 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 a tool to find, to try to find memory leaks inside the kernel. Uh, that's one example of a debugging framework. Uh, kernel has also a, a lot of options that we could enable to find the lockups and things like that. So this was created by me. Of course, you could, we could discuss a little bit about what tool is best for, for uh, a kind of problem, but uh, the, the main message here is we have a lot of tools, a lot of different tools that behave different, so we have to uh, sometimes find the best tool for the job, right, to fix bugs faster. Okay, uh, that said, I will start talking about kernel ops analysis. Uh, kernel ops is a way of the Linux kernel to tell us that something bad happens, or happened, and when the kernel detects a problem, like uh, an invalid memory instruction, invalid memory access, 
something that they can continue the execution, they will uh, print a kernel ops message. In the kernel ops message, we have a lot of useful things to, to use for the, the, the debugging process. Sometimes the, the kernel ops generates a kernel panic, right? And when the kernel panic happens, we don't have access to the kernel. It's just stop everything. You don't run any task. There is a documentation in the Linux kernel source code to, to help us debug this kind of problems. Find, uh, using the, the kernel ops, find the, the source code that caused the problem. And that's what we are going to do here. So this is our first demo. Uh, for the, the kernel developers, uh, you're going to see a lot of bugs here, but the, these bugs do, do, don't exist in the, the kernel, right? So don't worry about it. Uh, I put these bugs in the kernel for, for the talk. So I'm going to, to cause here a, a crash in the kernel, right? There is a bug somewhere in the kernel. When I try to read, uh, GPIO crashes, right? So this, uh, I think it's big enough for you guys to see, right? Great. Uh, so we have a kernel ops, followed by a kernel panic. So the system just stopped the execution. The kernel is not doing any more scheduling, things like that. Uh, what we have here, Looking at the slides is better. I will come back to the, the terminal. So we have here, um, from bottom up, we have the, the stack trace. So with the stack trace, we know which functions were, were called, right? And the last, last function that was, was executed before the crash. I put it in red to, to make it easier for you to, to see. We have the program counter, right? So it's like the, the instruction uh, pointer uh, for the guys that work with uh, this instruction register for the guys that work with x86. Uh, so we have, a kid that, we have here the address that uh, we have the problem, the crash. And above we have the program counter, the kernel is able to solve the address to the function. Uh, the, nor normally the Linux kernel is compiled with an option called k all sims. So with this option, the kernel can solve some symbols like pointers to functions. So here he's saying that the crash was that the function mcp 23 xpi read at the offset 34. So we have the function in the offset. What can we do about it? We could use a lot of tools to, to find the source of this problem. One of the tools, it's called uh, address to line, one of the tools from the tool chain. So uh, we'll call it here. I'm working with a, a board that's based on ARM architecture, so I have to use a tool chain uh, for ARM. Uh, so I'm going to use the address to line tool to just convert that address to a line. That's what the tool does. So I'm going to pass the dash F that will show me the function name, dash E. Dash E, we have to, to give to, the, to this to the kernel with the bugging symbols. So we have to, to have the, the kernel in ELF format with the bugging symbols. So we have here, I am in the, the Linux kernel source code. So I am in the source code. I have the VM Linux. That's the ELF image of the kernel with the bugging symbols. So I, uh, I compiled the kernel with the bugging symbols. And then the last parameter is the address that I will just copy from the oops message. Let's go to the beginning of the oops message. It's here. So just copy it here and put here. Right. So it is saying that this uh, program counter, this address is associated with this source code in the kernel, line 357. 
and then we have the line that causes the crash. As you can see, the MCP pointer is new here because I just changed the code so we could cause this crash, right? So the code doesn't have this bug. Okay, uh, how can we debug this differently? There is a tool in the scripts director of the, the Linux kernel that called FADDR to learn. And in this tool, we just have to, to, to give the, the kernel image with the bug symbols in our format and the function and its offset. So this, this is what we want. And the result's the same. So you don't have the program counter, but you have the function with the offset. You can solve to a line of code. And another way to, to solve this is using GDB. So we could just run here GDB. Oh, I forgot to give the VM Linux. So I started the GDB for my tool chain with the kernel image. And now I'm going to, to ask GDB to list what is in the, that address. I could use the address or the function plus the offset is the same, right? I will take the function and the offset. The same result. I can open here the TUI mode of GDB. Sometimes it doesn't work, the TUI mode. But uh, let's try again. Yeah. Very good. So. In any form, you could use that address line, you could use that script from the kernel, you could use HDB, and you, could, you can find the, the, the source code that caused the crash, right? It's all in the slides here. But what if you can access the, the kernel console? I'm here in the kernel console, I'm connected to a serial port, so I can uh, grab the the, the, the kernel ops and, and analyze it. But what if I don't have access to it? How can we debug a crash in the kernel if I don't have access? Because when it crashes and panics, you lost connection with the kernel, right? If you are not connected with something that are sending the message, uh, you just will just lose the message. So that is a framework in the kernel call, called pstore. Uh, it's a generic framework to, to store data. And uh, that is a, a driver for this framework that uh, is able to store the kernel message, the logs. The, you could store the full log of the kernel or just the, the kernel ops and panic in memory. So you could, you could reserve part of the memory for this. Of course, the kernel can't touch it because you lose in the reboot. So we reserve part of our memory for the, for, to store the, the kernel whoops and panic messages. And uh, if the kernel panics, you should, pr you should configure it to reboot in a panic. So when you reboot, a soft, it must be a soft reboot, of course, because it's a rather harder reboot, you just lose the memory. So it should be a soft reboot. So if a kernel panics and reboot it, you, could ha you can have access to the, to the kernel whoops and panic message. So in ARM, you, to, to configure it, the, the pstore, of course, you first have to enable pstore in the kernel. Then you have to configure uh, the device tree of your board uh, to reserve part of your physical memory to store these messages. So this is an example that is how we, uh, it's configured on my device tree. You just enable the runops, runops uh, driver with a specific configuration to allocate part of our memory. I'm allocating here two megabytes of memory for uh, to store kernel messages. And then let's try that now, see how, how it works. Uh, the first thing I will do is configure the kernel. I will give ke the kernel a parameter to reboot on panic. Let me take here my, uh, da, 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 here. 
So I'm just passing the kernel the, the option panic, panic uh, equals three. So it's going to, to panic in, when, a, when we have a panic, it's going to reboot in three seconds. Let me reboot it. That's my time here. Okay. Uh, great. Uh, now, I will access the board via SSH. Great. I, I will show you that this kernel, this, this, let's show, me, show you first the, the Pistoris is, uh, is exported to the user via a virtual file system. So you have to mount it in some directory. The, the default directory is sysfspstore. Uh, so we should be empty now because I just did a, a, hardware, a, a hard uh, reboot. So now I'm going to crash the kernel. But since I, I am in SSH, I, it's just, just going to freeze, right? I don't have the kernel panic here because I'm not connected to a, to a console, the kernel, right? It's a pseudo TTY here. So I should, I'm not going to take a look at the, the console, so I don't have the console. It should uh, close in a few seconds. Close it. And the kernel rebooted, right? I'm going to do SSH again. And now I have the files of the crash inside the PStore virtual file system. Can print, oops, and I have the same crash. I can take a look at it. So, so if you don't have access to the, the console, you still can uh, restore the last kernel log or the last kernel panic and take a look at it. That's the PStore. Uh, there is a, a feature called KDump. Has anyone here used KDump for something? Great. I must say uh, it took a while for me to make it work on ARM. Uh, but it worked. Uh, KDump is a, is a, is a mechanism uh, to, to take a core dump of the kernel. So it uses the KEXEC system call from the kernel to run another kernel. It's like you could use KEXEC to reboot your kernel. You just give your, uh, a kernel image, it will run. Uh, and the, the KDump is a mechanism for you to use when you want to take the kernel, the core dump of the kernel, uh, for example, a kernel that crashes. You could take the, uh, uh, an image of the, the, the core dump. I will show you here in the terminal how it works. Uh, so first you have to enable kdump in the kernel, and you should install the kexec tools in your root file system. And that's what I've, I've done. So I have here, oh, and you have to give the kernel uh, an option. Let me show you here, called crash kernel. And you give uh, the size of the memory that you want to allocate for the crash dump kernel. The kernel that will capture the core dump for you. So I give him uh, 64 megabytes for the crash dump kernel. I'm using the same kernel image. I'm, I, I didn't create two kernel, two different kernel images. So it's the same kernel image that will dump my kernel image. Okay, uh, and then how, how to use this feature? First you have to, you have to configure, run the KEXEC tool to, to set to the kernel, to load your kernel image to this reserved range of memory. I have here a script to do that. It's here. That's my script. So it will run the, 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 the KEXEC tool. 
and we'll give the keys to some parameters, dash D for debugging, to show debug information, the type of my image, it's a Z image, it's an ARM image. My image is in my boot directory, it's the same image that I'm booting here, and the command line uh, to, to, to pass to the kernel. It's, it could be any command line, normally you use here uh, uh, in each uh, uh, hand disk image, but I'm just rebooting using the NFS protocol, again, the same root file system. There are certain parameters that the documentation of the kernel uh, recommends to, to pass to this uh, crash dump kernel that I'm giving here. Three for network support. Uh, they say you shouldn't boot with SMP support, so you should run just one CPU to, to, to take the core dump. Right, so I'm going to run this script to load my kernel to memory. Great, it is loaded, it is configured. Now, if I have a kernel panic, you will just run this image, this kernel image, to, to take a core dump of the kernel. So I'm going to run the same command again. And let's see if it works. Loading cr crash dump kernel by and then kernel is rebooting with uh, other kernels that are loaded with KZAC. And then this kernel will provide me this file. Core, let me remember the name of the file, the name of the file. It's VM core, I think. Oh, proc. VM core. The, this is the core dump of the kernel. It's an image in alpha format. Then you can save it as a core and open like with GDB. There are there are also there is also a tool called uh, Crash that is built uh, using GDB to anal analyze this kind of uh, image. Copying this image it takes a while because it's big. Um, it's forty almost 45, 450, 100 megabytes. So I'm not going to copy this image. I have, I already copied to my machine. It is here and the files VM core is here. So how, what we, you should do? You should just copy this, since it is in memory, right? It's in the proc file system, you should copy it to the disk, like you could do that. It's going to take a while with this copy, so I just, uh, this is normal, uh, there is a bug with the K-Min leak, that's a framework. Uh, I didn't have time to, to take a look at this. So, but it worked, uh, despite this little bug with the K-Min leak. Uh, and then I have here the, the, the the core dump of the kernel, where it is, here. And I can just open GDB. GDB, I have to give GDB the, the kernel with, in the L format with the bugging symbols and then the core. I will start with the TUI mode. Let's see if it works. And then we have the source code, the, right, the line of the, the source code that caused the problem. So a lot of different ways, right, to, to get the same result. Very good. Uh, my problem here is the 30 minute limit of the talk. Uh, that's it for the crash dump analysis. Let's talk a little bit about debugging the kernel with GDB, like you want to interactively debug the kernel. The problem is that uh, you want to use the kernel to debug itself, right? So it's not an easy task. And you have the source code in one side, you have the, the kernel running on the target in the other side. So the solution is to use um, a kind of client-server architecture. So you have 
to have the, 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 the GDB server in the kernel and a client in your machine to send messages to the kernel, to the GDB server in the kernel. Uh, and that's how we are going to do here. So the kernel has an implementation of the GDB server called KGDB, and you can use it to, to debug the kernel. And that's the, the architecture. Right? You have just to enable, so how, how to, to make this work? You have to enable the KGDB in the kernel. KGDB uh, is available for a long time. Uh, you can use it to communicate with the kernel using the serial port or network. But the network support uh, is not mainline. You have to apply patches in the kernel to use it. Uh, now, as far as I know, uh, the, the mainline kernel only supports debugging via uh, serial, a serial port. So first, you, you compile the kernel with the KGDB support. Second, you put the kernel in uh, debug mode, and then use your toolchain, your G the GDB format toolchain, to connect to the, to the kernel and start the debugging process. Instead of showing you guys the slides, I will, the slides are is available right in the, the website from the event. I will show you uh, a session of GDB here. So what I have here, I have I already compiled the kernel with KGDB and all we need to, to debug the kernel with GDB. The uh, first thing I will do is reboot because it, it just panics. The first, so the first step I, I already done, I already compiled the kernel with the KGDB support. The second thing is to put the kernel in uh, debugging mode. So you could pass parameters to the kernel command line to do that, or you can at runtime put the kernel in GDB mode. And at runtime, we just need to configure a uh, parameter telling the kernel uh, what serial port is going to use for the debugging, and we just need to send a command to enter in debugging mode. And I'm going to use here the sysrq uh, a CSRQ command to the kernel. Let me show you here. I have here a script to do that, kgdb. So this is my script, it's very simple. It's going to configure the kernel with the name of the serial port that's going to use for debugging, and we'll just put the kernel in debugging mode. Right, I'm going to run it, and it's running. I forgot something here. I'm using the serial port for the console, and I'm trying to debug the kernel with the serial port. That's not going to work very well. So I will do something here. There is a project that uh, works as a proxy for the serial port. It's available in the, the kernel.org website. It's called agent proxy. And I'm going to use that to, to do that. So I wouldn't need that if I was not using the serial port for the console, but I want the serial port as a console also, so I'm going to do that. Uh, so I will just stop my, my pro serial port program. I will start this agent proxy. I'm, also, I'm, I'm almost uh, without time, right? Uh, let me finish here. I will run the, the, the proxy, it is running. Now I'm just going to telnet. Telnet, sorry. So this proxy is going to create two, two TCP ports. One of the TCP ports for the console, the other one is for the GDB connection. It's going to work as a proxy. It's going to receive the commands and say, oh, this command is for the console, this command is for the GDB. So one of the ports five 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 zero, it's for the the console, so the console is working, and the other one is for GDB. So now I'm going to put the kernel in debug mode again and start a debug session. 
Great, I'm going, now I'm going to, to go to the, the kernel source code. Uh, Linux. I'm going to run my debugger, hf, gdb, with the kernel with the buggy symbols. Let me open here the two remote. And I'm going to connect using the command target remote to connect to the kernel. And then I have to give localhost 5551. That's the other part from the agent proxy. And it, it is connected now. So I, it is stopped in the breakpoint. I will just tell the kernel to run, continue. Now it should be running. Forget about this lot of strange things in the console. So it is running, right? I can interrupt it at any moment, type in control C. Um, so what I'm going to do here uh, is put a, try to put a breakpoint. Let me see if that works. Control C. It is in the in the breakpoint, I will put here uh, a breakpoint in a function of the kernel. That function is in the GPIO keys driver. Continue again. And I will just press a button from my board. And it stop it in the function. I can do debugging stuff like run the step by step, print variables, and things like that. So I'm debugging the kernel with GDB. One thing cool is that when you when you, you are running the kernel with GDB, if you have any crash, it will stop in GDB. So if I run that catch again, we have the crash, and then in GDB, we have the, the, the kind of stops, the execution, and you, you could analyze here that crash again, right? So I think we are out of time. We, I, I, I have here a lot of more tools to, to show you. Uh, does anyone here wants to have coffee? No? You're fine? I'm fine. OK? More 10 minutes? OK? Great, great. Right. So uh, another tool that I want to, to show you is tracing. Uh, I don't know if anyone here was at the, the, the Steven talk earlier today. Uh, he talked a lot about the, the history of the, the tracing of the kernel, the various tools that you have inside the kernel. So today, Linux, had, Linux have a, a very good support for tracing. Uh, there are two kinds of tracing. You have a static tracing, like you, you, you instrument the kernel and then at the compilation. So you put tracing points in the compilation of the kernel. And you have dynamic tracing, like you instrument the kernel at runtime at any position of the code of the memory. Uh, some examples of how the kernel is traced. Uh, the the ftrace uses the dash pg uh, parameter from gc to instrument all the functions. So we just call uh, a, a function when you call a function. Uh, this is uh, the sample of a, a function of the kernel. So we have here, just, just to show you, uh, when you enable tracing in the kernel, you have this. You have uh, a call to a function that you can implement to instrument the kernel. You have trace events to instrument specific events in the kernel, like scheduling, GPIO events in this example. So we have a, a, whole, a, a whole framework to, to add the trace uh, events to the kernel. We have Kprobe. K-probe, K-probe is, a, is a framework for you to instrument anywhere in memory. You could put a breakpoint and run everything you want uh, in the kernel. So this is some examples of the framework that, can, that, 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 that we have inside the kernel for the tools to use it. And we have a lot of tools that use this, this kind of frameworks, right? You, you must know F-Trace, uh, TraceMD, that's the, the a command line tool for ftrace, uh, kernel shark. Uh, that's a, a visual tool for the file generated by tracemd. System tap, perf, kernel live patch uses. 
uh, and there are many more LTT and G. There are many more tools that, that use this, this framework of the kernel. F-Trace is a, is a very useful tool because it's very simple. It, it is able to trace the kernel using static and dynamic probes. And the interface is very simple. It's just files. So you just write to files We're using a virtual file system called TraceFS. You just read your write to files and you can trace the kernel. So it's very, very simple interface. But sometimes dependent, dependent uh, on what you want to do, uh, it's difficult to use F-Trace. Some examples. The F-Trace, you can enable the F-Trace in the kernel hacking menu of the menu config of the kernel. Uh, using F-Trace is simple. So you just mount the, the trace FS in a directory. The default directory today is syskernel tracing. You mount there. You have the available traces in a file. So you can trace functions. You could trace a function graph and you have uh, functions in a C style. Uh, you can trace the latency of the task. You can trace a lot of things. So for example, to trace a function, you just write function to the file current tracer and catch the trace file. So the kernel will start to trace all of the functions. And there are a lot, a lot of files that you, you could use to configure F-Trace. You could set filters. Now, I just want to trace it, this driver. You could set the functions of this driver to trace the kernel. Trace CMD trace is a command line tool that uh, is able to write to these files, so it is easier than just write into the file. And uh, it is able to generate a file called trace.dat that you can open with kernel shark. Let me show here an example of using these tools. So I have here, let me just reboot. That's the last thing I'm going to do, right? Because we are out of time. Uh, I have here, uh, a bug, the bug doesn't exist in the mainline kernel, okay. Uh, when I try to set the CPU frag scaling governor to on demand, the kernel, actually the command freezes, so I don't know what's going on. I don't know if everything is freezing, I don't know if just this command. I could try to SSH to see if it is running, so SSH, looks like it is running, but it's freezing. So how can we use the F-trace to debug this kind of problem? The, 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 the problem is very simple, right? It's just right into a file, uh, but it is freezing, so it is hanging inside the kernel. So we can use F-trace. This is the command I'm going to use to debug this problem. Uh, what's going on here? Whoa. On demand. Scaling governor. Right. So I'm going to, I, I'm using the trace CMD command. I'm asking to record the events from the kernel. I'm asking to use the function graph tracing. And I'm asking to not trace interruptions, functions inside interruptions. And I'm asking to follow this command. So is, it is going to, to follow to, uh, trace just the kernel functions from this command. That's the command that is freezing inside the kernel. When you run it, it gives us error. It should <laughs> give this error because something is wrong, right? That is, uh, let me try again here. And echo. And here again. 
It is running, it is tracing the kernel, it is uh, generating the, the, the trace dot uh, that file, uh, but uh, it is not returning, right? Because it is hanging inside the kernel. So let's just reboot the board. You see what we have in the directory that we run run the problem the, the, the program. We have here these files. So this is a kind of temporary files from the trace cmd command. We have to to generate a trace dot that file with both of these files because the, the command didn't complete TraceMD wasn't able to generate the file, final TraceMD file. So there is a comment from TraceMD, that's the restore comment, that is able to take both of these trace files from CPU 0 and 1 and generate the final trace dot that file. And we can see here that's just C CPU 0 run, run the, the command. Then, should take a while, I also have the command here in my machine to show you guys the trace dot that file is here. And then we can open this command with kernel shark. That's a tool, visual tool that you can use to trace the kernel uh, in a more visual way, right? So I have here, here all the functions were, uh, executed by the, my task. I will just, sometimes, uh, I don't know if that's 178, that's the, the PIG of the process of the command that we ran. I will filter by this 178. I don't want to see any other process here. Right, so how now to find out where the kernel free, freezes, right? Where is the problem? I'm going to filter here. I'm going to search for uh, a function of the kernel that I know that is going to be called on write because that's what I'm doing. I'm writing to a, a file. I'm search, I will search for syswrite. And uh, syswrite is here. This is the syswrite. I can follow all the calls. Syswrite, case is right. VFS is right. Uh, since I'm doing uh, graph tracing, I can see who's calling who. And I can see if uh, one of the functions didn't return, right? VFS right, that call it VFS uh, dash dash VFS right. Underline, underline, we have to write. That call, uh, let's see, kernel FS top right. And the call goes, sysfs kf right. Now we're going inside the sysfs IO system. That calls store. That calls store killing governor. So we, we know the problem is around here because we are trying to set the governor. That call this CPU frac parse governor. That called uh, mutex lock. That called find governor. That called try model get. That called mutex lock again. And that call looks like it didn't return. The mutex log should return faster, but it didn't return. So there is something wrong with this call. What we can do here? We can just go to the function uh, CPU frac parse governor to see these calls. I'm going to open the kernel source code here. CPU frac parse governor. Oops, tech CPU frac parse governor. So 
So here we can see that this function called mutex lock, find governor. Here we have the function. So the function mutex lock, find governor. Uh, it didn't call this mutex unlock because we're not seeing here, right? Just find governor, then try to model get. That's here. Then another mutex lock that didn't return. It's not closing the mutex lock. And as you can see in the code, it is in a deadlock state because you're, you're doing two mutex lock of the same mutex. So that's the problem. So that's another way of debugging the kernel, in the case, the kernel that uh, hangs, uh, about the bug that hangs the kernel. Very good, well, let's finish the talk. Uh, the, the conclusion here, that is more, there are more tools here, uh, but I don't have the time to, to talk about it. Please take a look after the talk at the slides, and if you have any questions, please send me an email. The conclusion, the conclusion is, know your tools, right? I, I see a lot of develop, developers, when, when they have bugs in the kernel, they just go to the printk uh, command to do everything, and sometimes we have more efficient tools to do the job. So, so know your tools and use the right tool for the job, right? That, that's our conclusion. There are many more, more tools to talk about, system tap, perf, eBPF, uh, there, there is a, a lot of uses nowadays of the eBPF framework. Sometimes printk solves the problem, so don't ignore. The problem is not using the printk, the problem is use just the printk to debug the kernel. And debugging is fun. Thank you.